So I'm going to have a lot I want to say in this video. So buckle up, settle in, grab some popcorn. You may need some alcohol um, because, uh, yeah, there's just, there's a lot I want to say. Uh, that's number one. Number two is I'm going to skip the intro for this video because I want to waste as little time as possible because there is so much to talk about. Uh, number three is a uh, spoiler warning. There are spoilers for this video. So if you are intending on seeing the rise of Skywalker and have yet to see the rise of Skywalker, go watch the movie, then come back and listen to this video because you can't really talk about the kind of movie the rise of skywalker is in my opinion anyway without getting into the nitty-gritty details it's just that kind of movie so spoiler warning you have been warned uh that's what number three i guess and number four is um this is how i'm going to structure this video i'm going to tell you whether i like the movie or not and if you, you know, haven't guessed already by the thumbnail, you probably already know my answer. Uh, and if you follow me on social media, you probably have a good idea. But I'm going to tell you what my answer is, just, I guess, for the sake of it now. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to, instead of diving right into what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it, uh, I'm going to pump the brakes for a moment and tell you how and why. The how and why I feel the way I do in regards to the rise of Skywalker. And why am I doing that? Because it is intense integral that you understand where I'm coming from. And hopefully it'll give you something to think about and gnaw on. So, all right, here we go. So what did I think of the rise of Skywalker? What did Dave McRae think of the rise of Skywalker? Well, uh, I liked it. I really, really liked it. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was great Star Wars entertainment. It was exactly what I expected, exactly what I thought it was going to be. But Dave, how can that be? Disney's been fucking Star Wars in the ass for the last few years, man. They've been bending George Lucas over his barbecue and slapping his sweaty ass with a greasy spatula. How the hell can you like it? Uh, <laughs> uh, can you imagine that? Sorry, George. Uh, you're nothing but a shill, man. You're a Disney shill. Oh, yeah, you're, you're right. Where's my check from Disney? Oh, here it is. <laughs> it's right here. Uh, $498 million. That's a little low this time around. Hey, there's a message from Bob Iger. Hey, Dave. Thanks for shilling like a villain. Bobby, let's do lunch. <laughs> oh, Bob. Such a funny fucker. Uh, I'll cash that later today. Um... I loathe The Last Jedi. So let that sink in for all you people that think I'm a shill. Um, okay, so now I've only seen the movie once as of shooting this video and posting this video. I saw it yesterday with my girlfriend. I'm seeing it again tomorrow with my buddy Bruce. So these are my first impression thoughts. Just keep that in mind as well, okay? It's entirely possible that in the next couple of days there could be an addendum video to this one. But maybe not. Who knows? We'll see how I feel. Um, okay, so... Excuse me. Yes, I really liked the movie. How could how could you like the movie, Dave? It should have been this. It should have been that. If they had a plan for the beginning, this is the should have should have should have should have should have should have. Look, folks, I have read almost every 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 review there is of this movie. I've listened to tons of videos. I know what everybody is saying. I read your comments in the comments like, "Fuck Disney. They should have done this. There should have been a plan. They should have done this. They should have done this. How about this? What about this? How do they fuck this?" I get it, man. I get it. I hear you, and I would say I probably agree with about 90% of what you're saying. I understand it. So how can I like this movie? How could I have enjoyed myself? Well, here's why. Before I get into what I really liked and what I didn't like, or what I maybe would have done a bit differently, because we are going to talk about that, as quickly as I can now, here's why. I'm somebody that really liked The Force Awakens. For those of you that watch me on a regular basis, you know that. I don't think it's a perfect movie. There's a lot of things in there I would have done a bit differently, but I thought it was what Star Wars needed to be at that time to get Star Wars back on track. Loved it. Thought it was great. Uh... It felt familiar. It was Star Wars again. It looked like a Star Wars movie. It felt like a Star Wars movie. The energy, the pacing, some new characters that were really cool, some mysteries that were set up, really awesome. Okay. The Last Jedi, which is the second act in this three-act play, is, was, still is, <laughs> the single most disappointing experience of my movie-going life. I, I, I've never felt more disappointed leaving a movie theater than I have leaving the movie theater 
at the end of The Last Jedi. And it has absolutely, unequivocally nothing to do with 40-year-old fanboy expectations that were not met. And everything to do with serious character development and story structure issues in that movie when when we're talking about the second act in a three-act play. It is just atrocious. I was reading somebody online who said it perfectly. They said the the uh, Force Awakens was a great setup and it was almost like The Last Jedi was another setup. Like it's like we have two first acts and that is, a, he, he's bang on because that's the problem. So when I left the theater after The Last Jedi and I did some videos on it, I talked to my buddies about it, my girlfriend about it, I knew, I even knew leaving the theater, it was over. It was over. The second act of a three act play is so integral because that is, it's usually always the darkest for our protagonists. It's its the chapter where you see the development and the most growth. You see the arcs begin to take shape and you know, you introduce weird and unusual, not weird, but like, like interesting sort of, um, uh, uh, things that, that, that propel the characters forward in, in really rich and organic ways. There was none of that in The Last Jedi. It it was like we were beginning again and the movie ended on a positive note, like the first act usually does. And I left thinking, I don't give a fuck about what happens next. I just don't care. It just, anyways, I could go really deep into it about, I just don't believe in the choices. I don't believe that Luke would be that way. And I don't believe the justification for why he's that way. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't, I, I, no, I don't believe that. And there's that kind of thing right across the board. The force projection was cool. That's about it. Um, okay. So, uh, so knowing that leaving the movie, knowing that I knew that the rise of Skywalker could only be so much. Yes, it should be this. They should have done this. There should have been a plan. They should have had this. They should have done this. But even though there may not have been a plan per se, let's say there was no plan. And JJ had, now JJ had story notes for Johnson. He did. This is a fact. We know this. There were story notes saying, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Now, obviously you don't have to do this verbatim, but here's what I'm thinking because I've set this up and I've set that up. Here's where I think we should kind of go. And then you do kind of your own thing with that and, you know, blah, blah, blah which is what you're supposed to do when you're the second man in. You don't have the luxury of just beginning again. But anyway, so, but Johnson didn't do that. He took all the notes and threw them out. Literally, he threw them over his show. He didn't didn't do anything, anything, nothing. And here we are. I knew we were in trouble after that movie, as a lot of you guys did. So, I knew, I even said to my buddy at the time, I said, JJ has to create conflict and resolution all in one movie and make it feel like it's connected somehow. So all the criticisms that I'm seeing in the reviews, it doesn't surprise me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what happens when you fuck up in the second act. That's what happens. Because now it's like, uh, 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 you know, They should have done two extra films. They should have just cut the cord with the tradition of the three movies and just made nine and 10 because it would have given J and hired JJ to do both because it would have given more breathing room, you know, to kind of do this. But that's not Star Wars. Star Wars is this. Fuck Star Wars. It ruined it. Fuck Disney. Disney doesn't have fuck. I, I hear it. I hear it. I get it. I get it. We're talking about what is not what necessarily should have been. I, I agree. So, I knew going into the rise of Skywalker, it was going to be exactly what I got. So I had a great time and it, you know, JJ, like, should it have been this? Yes, but it, it couldn't, it could, it was never going to be that because of the last Jedi. It was impossible. The only way that the rise of Skywalker was going to blow everybody across the board away, not just half and half was if we, we go back and we redo the second chapter, the second act, because then you set it up properly and you give some, re- and then things make a little more sense. The Rise of Skywalker is essentially the second and third act, okay? That's the problem. 
So my expectations, and you heard me say this before the movie came out. For those of you that follow me on a regular basis, you heard me even say, we should be going into it going, holy fuck. But if I can leave going, okay, all right, cool, okay. Then we've limped across the finish line, but at least we're not still lying out, you know, I mean, listen, should we have, should we have been first across breaking the ribbon? Yes, yes. But we didn't. We tripped and fell. But we crossed. Should our time have been better? Yes. But we crossed. And I'm like, okay. Yep, cool. All right, we did it. Okay. And I really enjoyed it. It answered some questions. The Star Listen, JJ was going to deliver a really entertaining Star Wars movie because he knows Star Wars in terms of the entertainment, the nostalgia. There's too much fan service. Listen, if you're going to do fan service, if you're ever going to do fan service, this is the movie you do it in. The final chapter. So it didn't bother me. I thought it was great because I was expecting nothing more. I was expecting to tie up some loose ends. I was expecting some, you know, some heart, some moving moments, answering some questions, some nostalgia. Boom. That's what I got. I'm happy. I'm happy. I enjoyed it. Maybe even a little more than The Force Awakens. So let's talk about the things I liked and the things that I didn't like. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get through this pretty quickly here. Again, first impressions. Number one. I love, and by the way, spoilers, just last reminder, I love that Ray's a Palpatine. Love it. Love that. The symbolism around that, the layers within that symbol, I love that. Now, a lot of people seem to think, that's fucking stupid, it's ruining Anakin's arc, Return of the Jedi is absolutely ruined, and all this kind of stuff. A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people. I understand. I I can see how you feel that way. And maybe if you are a... And I'm not saying you have to be in order to feel this way. I'm just saying, especially for the real neck deep, sweaty Star Wars nerds that know everything there is to know about everything. Maybe you feel that way. I don't. I thought I was going to, but I don't. Because, you know, Darth Vader, Anakin, still brought balance to the Force. Maybe not forever, but he did it. And most importantly, he saved his son's life. But the Emperor's alive! He didn't do it! No, but in The Rise of Skywalker, there's, there's, a, there's a line that Palpatine says, I've died once before, or I've, I've been dead once before, or something like that. Oh, that's interesting. Is he referring to what happened on the second Death Star? What, kind of interesting. It'll probably wind up in a book or comic. Um, so, for all intents and purposes, Anakin did it, and most importantly, he saved his son's life. If Anakin was not there, if Luke had not had... The impact he had on Vader's deep subconscious, Luke would be dead and that would be it. The Empire would have won, you know? So I, I, I get what people are saying, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I love that Rey's a Palpatine because it goes to show you that, I mean, she's essentially Hitler's kid. And she's based, the message of that is it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter who your parents are. You're not where you come from. You're what you, you can it's whatever you make of yourself. You're not necessarily your blood. Now, you can never escape the fact that she's a Palpatine. Sure, yeah, 100%. But she doesn't have to get into the family business. And because she was taken away and and hidden by her parents who were murdered by, you know, Palpatine, essentially, um, Palpatine didn't have the opportunity to, because it's nature versus nurture, right? He didn't have the opportunity to raise her and nurture her into the dark side and manipulate her the way he did Anakin. So... You know, it was great. It was a Palpatine rising up to defeat Palpatine once and for all. There's and and taking on the Skywalker name. There's no more better fuck you than a Palpatine taking the Skywalker name. I mean, that's just like that's the biggest like yeah fuck you dad or not dad sorry grandpa kind of thing right. I, I think it's great. I love that she's a Palpatine. Love it. The symbolism and layers there are fantastic. Uh, love the chemistry between Ray and Poe and Finn finally seeing them together. This is what we should have seen in the second act. We should have seen them, you know, that that's what should have happened. There's a lot, there's it, and that's why it feels like two movies in one to some degree. Love the chemistry, the camaraderie between them, the bickering, the, it was great. And then you tack on the MacGuffin type adventure, the Indiana Jones globe trotting or galaxy trotting in this sense adventure mixed in with the chemistry 
is great. We've all seen globetrotting type of movies, adventure films, where the characters are serviceable. But when you have characters that are fun and exciting and the chemistry is great, like in Jumanji, right, with The Rock and, and you know, um, Kevin Hart, and like you, it makes it, the adventure, that much more awesome and exciting to watch. So I loved all that. Long overdue. Love that. Uh, too bad that it was the last movie and we can't get more. Maybe we will when we're like 80. I don't know. Um, so I love that. Uh, really, lo really love the Death Star. Oh, seeing the wreckage and the scale of the Death Star and when Rey's walking in it and seeing all the helmets and the water, you know, rushing by and, and the Emperor's theme and shit. Love that. Just the scale that was just awesome. Loved everything on that. Loved the battle with Dark Rey. I thought that was kind of cool. I have a lot of butts to these things that I'll, I'll talk about, but I, I really, B-U-T by the way, not B-U-T-T. Uh, but I, I, I love that. I uh, love the, the duality between them, the light and the dark and how like, you know, they come up against each other and, you know, Dark Ray goes yeah, like that. Re I just love that. Love that she fought herself. And it is, again, very symbolic. She's, it's, it's, yeah, there's different layers that her fighting herself. It's not just a cool thing. It's, it means a lot of shit, right? So I love that. Uh, Lando, great to see Lando back. Hello, what have we here? Of course, he didn't say that, but they did give him the line of, uh, I got a bad feeling about this. I'm glad they gave it to an original legendary character. That was cool, because essentially it could be the last time we hear it, right? Unless they want to take it over into every Star Wars movie. I think it should just be this, but that's just me. Uh, and I love the nostalgia. Like I said, I mean, if you're going to do fan service, this is the movie you do it in, right? Out of any movie, this is the one you, because that's it, you don't have any other, you know, you don't have any other opportunities to do it. So I loved it. And because I knew it was going to be what it was because it could only be that. Uh, love the dynamic between Ray and Kylo. Just, you could, it's, it's palpable. I mean, you can really feel it now. Uh, really awesome stuff. You, you can absolutely feel the dynamic and the connection growing and her struggle. Like she's, because remember between TLJ and the rise of Skywalker, a year has gone by. So Ray is more powerful. She's more wise. She's been being trained by, you know, uh, Leia, which is really great. Um, and, uh, but she's been feeling things like she's, she's almost intuitively now beginning to understand who she really is. And that it just to see that struggle and that, that internal struggle to coming to those terms was awesome. And then when Ren finally tells her, it's like, oh, Daisy knocked it out of the park in this movie. They, they everybody did. They both did. And Poe, like Oscar Isaac was probably one of my favorite characters in the movie. Um, the action was great. No surprise there. Uh, the de again, going back to the, um, uh, Death Star, the lightsaber battle on the wreckage and all that shit. That was fantastic. How they handled Leia's death was great. Now, obviously, had Carrie Fisher been alive, could they have done more and make it make us feel a bit more? Sure, but she's not, unfortunately. So uh, I thought what they did was classy and really nicely done. And uh, and the symbolism around that as well, how she essentially sacrifices herself to save Ray because Kylo's about to, you know, strike her down and Leia distracts her, uh, distracts him, you know, by saying, Ben, right? And he goes like this, like, what the fuck? Right? You know what I mean? And then she gets into that bed and she passes away and she passes away in front of R2-D2, bringing it full circle because obviously they were, you know, you know what I mean? It's just, it's awesome. Awesome shit. Really like that. And I thought how they utilized Carrie Fisher, because obviously she wasn't on set shooting this movie, was flawless. I thought it was brilliantly uh, placed. Great job. Um, and then of course, Han Solo. Oh my God. The moment between Ben and Han Solo, the first time I choked up in this movie, maybe it's because Harrison Ford's my favorite actor. Maybe it's because Han Solo is one of my favorite characters, but nonetheless, just bring it full circle in the dialogue. Like in the force awakens, when Kylo Ren says, um, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Can you help me? You're supposed to think that he's talking about, I know I'm supposed to go back to the light side, but no, he's, he's basically saying, I know I need to kill you, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Can you help me? And that's why after he stabs him, he says, thank you. Right. It's awesome symbolism in that whole fucking thing. Well, in this movie, it's the opposite. He really does mean it now, and which is why he begins to tear up. And he says, Dad, right? Because he wants to say, I love you, but he doesn't. And all Han Solo says is, I know. Ah! <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I, one of my favorite scenes in the entire... Great stuff. Like, just really nicely done. I really like that. I really like that. Um, what else here? What else do I like? Uh, oh! 
when Ren and and uh, uh, Ray are on the desert planet, I forget the name of it now, and they're struggling with that um, transport that Chewie is on. He's not really on it, obviously, but she thinks, you know, he is. And they're struggling with the force, and then lightning comes out of her hand. Love that. Loved it, because it shows the darkness that's within her. It shows how powerful she could be if she went there, if she was allowed to, if she was seduced. Love that shit. And everybody's like, what the fuck? Like Finn and Power, like what? Even Kylo Ren's like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that was awesome. And just destroying it, like destroying it. Like not like, no, like destroying it. Love that. Love that. And I love the look on her face like, Oh my God, like what the hell have I done? Where did that come from? Love that stuff. I love how JJ redeemed Luke in this movie. Now Luke's not in it for long, but I loved how he redeemed him in this movie um, because <laughs> it's a big fuck you to Ryan Johnson and whether that's right or wrong, whether they should have done that, and should, there was a tug of war going on here and I'm not here to argue the merits of whether they should or shouldn't, but this is the reality of what happened. And of course, when Daisy is about to throw the lightsaber into the fire, uh, of course, Luke catches it and says something to the effect of a uh, Jedi's weapon is not to be disrespected or something like that. Something like that. And it's like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like really awesome. I really like that. And, uh, and Luke was Luke. He was optimistic and hopeful and it was really cool to see him that way. And, um, and I love that he, he, he brought his X-Wing out of the ocean. I remember in The Last Jedi, when they see that, uh, I remember actually saying that he should have, yeah, anyway, I don't want to get into, I just remember thinking that that's what should have happened and it happened. And to see it happening was really awesome. Again, full circle, very poetic. Obviously he was unable to do it in The Empire Strikes Back. Now I'm sure he has been able to do it for many years now, but to see him do that, was really cool. And Yoda's theme playing and the X-Wing rising above, you know, the rocks. And Luke is there like this. And it's just like, ah! <laughs> right in the feels. Love that. I uh, thought it was really cool. So, um, uh, oh, and I also love Exegol and the lightning and the Sith temple, you know, and the statues and the visuals of that were amazing. I thought Ian McDermott was great as the, as the emperor. Uh, he didn't, you know, I mean, he's older now, obviously, but I thought he was great. And it's, I, I would love to have seen him more, more of him as the emperor, like full on flat, like he sucked the life force or the life essence or, you know, whatever it is out of Kylo and, uh, Rey but he was only like real Emperor Palpatine. Like we remember him for five minutes, maybe not long. It's too bad because he looked awesome, but sometimes less is more. Um, so that was really cool. And the Sith, you know, loyalists and the, you know, shah, 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 you know, and in that, in, just seeing them all up there, just awesome, awesome shit. Really cool stuff. Okay. So now to my dislikes or things that uh, I would love to have seen, but I say these things with an understanding of what do you expect, right? Because of the shitty middle chapter, the shitty second act. Okay, so here's what I have to say. Um, the first thing that, again, and I read this all across the board with unfavorable reviews, the pacing, it's too fast. It's, it's, there's so much going on. Well, yeah, of course there is. And I'm not saying there necessarily should have been, but it doesn't surprise me because JJ has so much to make up for. He's got so much to do, which is why I think they should have broken tradition and just made nine and 10 at the most. And if they didn't want to do that at the very least, they should have pushed this movie to three hours because this movie was already two hours and 21 minutes. And did it feel like it? It didn't feel like it. I mean, that thing was going out of clip. So an extra 20 minutes probably would have been nothing. And it would have given this movie time to breathe and flesh out a few more things in regards to making sense of some things. Like, for example, The Emperor's Return, right? It would have been really nice, especially at the beginning of the movie, felt really sort of kind of thrown in there. And it would have been a lot better if Ren had more time with the Emperor. There was a little bit more of exposition between those two characters. He goes over to the Snoke, you know, um, uh, like container or tube or whatever it is there, seeing all the clones of Snoke. And maybe he asks some questions and, and he doesn't believe that this is the Emperor. How can it be? It can't be. And no, and, and more of that, you know what I mean? And maybe other characters, you know, come out and we get a little more with how he's here. Not, not on the nose, but just a little more where we go, oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, and if you had an extra 20 minutes of the movie, 
you would have been able to flesh certain scenes because there's a few of them throughout the film out a bit more and it would have helped as a viewer to help us feel a little more fulfilled and complete that way. So I agree, yeah, it's it's totally, there's a lot in there and it's moving at a clip. And, but I understand why. I, I sh But it should have, it should have, it should have. I get it, but I get it, if you know what I mean. Um, let's see, uh, more with Dark Ray. I would have liked to have seen more with Dark Ray. I thought that battle ended a bit too quickly. I, I, I wanted more there. I, I thought it would have been interesting if, 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 if you gave more exposition, uh, or a, not exposition necessarily, but a little more dialogue to Dark Ray. Uh, maybe she gets the upper hand and she's got a few more things to say, right? Just giving some more context again, just filling some things out, right? But that might go back to maybe making the, the, um, uh, the film just a bit longer. Um, more with Snoke, but that goes back to, again, just kind of maybe like, wow, this is really interesting. A little more questions that maybe should have been asked, especially by Ren, because Snoke was the one who seduced Ren. I mean, technically it was, and it was Palpatine, but according to him, for many years, Snoke was his master. Snoke was the one that, you know, that seduced him. Snoke's, so he should have had more questions. I wanted to see that a bit more, um, even though technically it was, you know, Palpatine. Uh, let's see here. Uh, pretty much who cares now? It should have been answered in The Last Jedi, and it wasn't. Uh, so it's kind of like the moments passed. But I still would have liked to have known how Maz, or Maz, or whatever, uh, got that lightsaber. Uh, how did she get Luke's lightsaber? Like, where? It's not a big deal, but, I mean, you know, anymore, really. But I would have liked to have known how she got that. Um, let me see. Uh, and this is fan service. This is unnecessary. Uh, but when, uh, Ray is listening to the disembodied voices of all the Jedi, you know, that are trying to give her her strength and, and to rise up and defeat her grandfather, fucking amazing. Um, I think it would have been cool if we didn't just see the voices, but we saw almost echoes, glimpses of force ghosts around her. Not full on force ghosts, okay? Not full on force ghosts. Um, not like Luke, but just kind of like shades, kind of like, oh, what? was that fucking Anakin? Was that Anakin? I think that was fucking Anakin. Dude, that was Luke. That was Luke. That was Yoda. Shit, that was Qui-Gon. You know, like echoes. Um, like that would have been a nice sort of compliment to that, which would have got all the fucking Star Wars fanboys jizzing all over the backs of their seats, let's be honest. Um, that would have been cool. Uh, not necessary, but it would have been kind of cool to see. I got to admit, just that one extra last bit of fan service that would have been amazing. Uh, that would have been cool. So, um, but really at the end of the day, I mean, listen, I agree. Fast paced, is it a little clunky at times? Yes, especially in the beginning. It feels like they got to go bump, 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 and then it kind of smooths out a bit. But that's because of the shit show. The, it's because you got two beginnings. You got two... Uh, for all intents, I know that, look, there are things in The Last um, Jedi that, that do move some things forward, but I'm saying for all intents and purposes, because nothing really happens in The Last Jedi that is indicative of how a second act should be played out, we don't, it's like, we're like, what the hell is this? So JJ's got all this making up to do and it could only be what it is. I agree, it should have been this, they should have had a plan, they should have... But I, I knew leaving The Last Jedi, it was over. Any possibility that The Rise of Skywalker was going to be the end game of, you know, even bigger than end, or, you know, no, it wasn't going to be. It was only going to be what it could. Now, could it have been a better movie than even what it is? Sure. Yeah. Like I said, tack on an extra, you know, 20 minutes, uh, flesh this out a bit, tweak this. Sure, yes, of course. But it was never going to be light years ahead of what it is. It never was going to be light years ahead of what you got because it can't be because of the sec because the second act destroyed the momentum. Destro it, it did. It, it just, that second act is so fundamentally vital to a three act play. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So I got exactly what I was expecting for the most part. Again, there were some things I think they should have done, mm, you know, but for the most part, I was thoroughly entertained. I had questions answered. Palpat that Palpatine thing with her being a Palpatine. I was like, yes, 
Yes, I love it. Um, and great visuals, energy, the camaraderie. It was a fun adventure movie. And I love that she took the Skywalker name and that the final shot is of the two sons. And we see the force ghosts of Luke and Leia, you know, basically saying, it's okay. You can, you can take our name. You know, you've, you, you're not a Palpatine. You're a Skywalker. But she is a Palpatine. Well, I know, but symbolically, that's what's so great about it. And what's really cool, I'll end on this. What's really cool about it too, is I know she's not a gray Jedi. And admittedly, I'm not into the whole lore of Star Wars. Never read any of the books. But before doing this video, I went online and I read a bit about what the gray uh, Jedi's, what, excuse me. I was had so many thoughts there. Uh, I read about essentially what the gray Jedis are. And the Cliff Notes version of that, essentially, is a gray Jedi is essentially a Jedi that walks the line between the light and the dark and can even dabble a bit in the dark without being seduced by it. They can tap into it and use it if they need to, but they're never seduced by it. That is what it says online. That's sort of the Cliff Notes version. I'm, I have no doubt you can dive deeper into that. But essentially, real layman's terms, just think of it kind of like that. Well, Rey's not a gray Jedi. But she's as closest almost to one that we've gotten, which is almost in some ways, if you think about it, true balance. Somebody who possesses the understanding of the darkness that's within her, but is never seduced by it. But maybe at some point in her life may have to tap into it to get out of a jam or, say, or save somebody's life. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, that's really cool. I love that she's a Palpatine. Fucking amazing. Anyways, um, so yeah, so that's what I have to say. And that is why I am able to, that is why I am able to enjoy this movie. I hear, I, I've read the reviews, I've watched the videos, I hear what you're saying. There's no doubt in the comment section below, there's going to be a lot of shoulda, 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 shoulda. I get it, man. I hear you. I, I get it. I get it. But unfortunately... It was never going to be, you know, um, and, uh, because, and not because of the force awakens because of the middle chapter, because of the last Jedi. Now I'm going to go see the movie again tomorrow. So we'll see, uh, you know, we'll see if things change. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10 on first watch. I think it's possible on a second watch. I'll bump that up to eight. But it's never going to go above that because there are things in here that he just couldn't do. He didn't have the time to do. They wouldn't allow him to do or they just there wasn't the time, right? So I think that I, I don't think it's going to go above that because in order for this to be a 10 out of 10 for me, it would have to be a three hour movie, fleshing things out, explaining more, so, you know, that, that kind of thing, right? Making it a little less kind of clunky here and kind of doing that kind of stuff. Um, so the highest it'll go for me is probably an eight, um, which is essentially what I gave The Force Awakens. So, you know, I'll end with this. At the end of the day, Ray finding out she's a Palpatine, that's amazing, right? I think it is. That should have been the end of your second act. That should have been the end of your second act. And we're all going, what the fuck? And that's where you end it. It's like, what the fuck? And then the third movie, you know, you got all this time now, right? The Rise of Skywalker is essentially the, the second and third act. <laughs> As clunky as it might be at times, it's the second and third act. It's essentially it. You don't need to watch The Last Jedi ever again. You just don't. For better or worse, right or wrong, hey man, that's what happens when you throw everything out that J.J. gave you and just basically began again. I mean, that you, you can't do that. You can't do that. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. I have no doubt there's going to be a lot of fucking... Da, 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 da. You shill. You're nothing but a shill, man. You're nothing but a shill. You're right, I am. I got this $498 million check I'm going to cash. <laughs> uh, people glom onto buzzwords and they, sh they throw shill out like, a, like they throw out fucking toilet paper. Anyway, so uh, yeah, comment below, let me know your thoughts, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. If you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. That's where I tend to post in the meantime and in between time, and I'm not posting here. All my links are in the description. Uh, check them out until your heart's content. So yeah, that's all. Th that's it for me. I will talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers.